Most of you know, our theme this month is heritage. So I think we've picked the perfect speaker today. He is our town underground hip hop artist who started at the ripe age of 17, 18, in high school with his first successful underground hip hop group, Souls of Mischief. Went on to become one of the eight men uh, in the group Hieroglyphics, now Hiero Imperium. He's on new projects as uh, at Rap Noir, if you check him out on Twitter, that's his solo project right now. But also, most recently, he um, has a master's in architecture. Um, please help me welcome Tajay Massey. All right, good morning, everybody. I'm Tajay Massey. I see familiar faces. I see unfamiliar faces. But we're all in Oakland, so we'll probably bump into each other at Blue Bottle or something. I'm actually terrified of public speaking. I want to just be honest about it. I do music. It's a whole different context. So I'm just letting you know that. All right. Hey, hey, we know that place, all right. Being from Oakland has always been a source of pride for me. Whether or not this pride was misplaced or based upon all of the wrong things, the statement, I'm from Oakland, has always meant something when I said it. Uh, depending upon the audience or the context, Oakland pride can reference so much. What's crazy is that the interconnectedness of all these sources of pride and how they mediate each other in a swirl of political and economic social significance uh, manifests whenever you speak about being from Oakland. And this mix, which I would describe as inclusive and multifaceted, is what makes the statement, I'm from Oakland, hold so much weight. Because we are home of the Panthers, home of the Mac, <laughs> home of the Raiders, birthplace of crack. <laughs> We're where the hippies partied and where the Hells Angels raise hell. We are Occupy Movement Central, partly because we're home to one of the most brutal, 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 yeah, it's newer, brutal police forces in America. You see, they got me shook. I can't even talk shit about them. <laughs> but that also has to do with the fact that we are home to some of the craziest people, craziest thugs who from time to time clash with this brutal police force. We're a place where integration and diversity is actually practiced. I grew up with black folks, white folks, Latinos, uh, and multiple types of Asian, and you had to know the difference, you know, and if you didn't, you asked, you know, it wasn't just, you assume. We were at a place that's not weird to be queer, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. You go other places and it really feels like you're going into the 1950s as soon as you get out of the Bay Area, unfortunately. And we're a place, I think, where the hope of the 60s and 70s actually manifests sometimes. I'm gonna give you personal history. I actually was not born in Oakland, California. I was born at Stanford University Hospital but I moved here when I was two, so I can claim Oakland, right, and I get beat up. And like many of the statistical subjects you read and hear about in the incessant stream of negative press rammed down our throat by mainstream media, I'm a black male. I'm raised in a single-parent household in East Oakland. Oh, what? Like many of the statistical subjects about whom you read, I've been surrounded by drugs, violence, hopelessness, and the general malaise that seems to be the only thing that gets our city press all of my life, but that only describes like a tiny, I mean a fraction of my upbringing, really the smallest part, because the same conditions that seem to be characterized as disadvantages and hindrances and pitfalls are the conditions that made me and most, and when I say most, probably 80 to 90 percent of my friends mentally fit, aware, determined, you know, quick on our feet, and focused human beings. I've been to the city of God. I've been to Marcy, son. I've been to the Robert Taylor homes when they were there and they weren't waterfront condos. I've been to Cabrini Green. I've been to the Third Ward. I've been to Ninth Ward. I've been to the jungles. Suwu, you know. And I felt at home. I'm, to be honest, I didn't encounter anything that I hadn't seen before in Oakland. Uh, but I also felt like an outsider because of all the beautiful things that I had seen in Oakland that I think that many of my counterparts in these places that I visited never got the chance to see and probably never will get the chance to see except on the internet. I mean, we're surrounded by the natural beauty of the Bay Area. We are the center of the Bay Area. 
So our landscape from the parks to the beaches to historic forests like Robert Park, where we hung out a lot as kids, to the man-made wonders of the several bridges that surround us and even the huge structures at the port that have become iconic and symbols of Oakland. All that scenery is just as much a part of the experience as the social atmosphere here. And so I can recall being little and taking field trips to Chabot Science Center, Lawrence Hall of Science, Strawberry Canyon. I mean, it's in Oakland, we're gonna just put our arm over Berkeley right now too. Cause <laughs> it's the little homie, that's the little homie. You know, I've been to Jack London's house. You know, a lot of people can't say that, right? We've, we, we know where Jack London used to stay. We can go there right now. And the Jack London Square. I mean, we never think about Oakland, but we're a waterfront city. We, we've got a, a seaport, we've got boats. I mean, you know, so there's this hood thing going on, but then I know brothers with yachts, you know, <laughs> who's still in the hood, you know? Like, it's, 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 not, it's not a schizophrenic thing. It, it's, it's a duality or a juxtaposition that I think uh, a lot of life in Oakland sort of uh, represents and is. Um, so this is our legacy as much, and in fact, even more than the negativity that seems to plague our city in the media. I mean, look, we're all here. It's Thursday morning. It's beautiful, it's, you know, hazy, summertime, Oakland. This kind of Frisco summer outside, actually. But we're here, we're all happy, we're, we're all healthy. Nobody's whacking nobody. You know, like, we're, we're good, right? And we're in, we're in Oakland, I mean, wow, who would have thought? So dysfunction surrounded us, yet so did some of the most incredible examples of human triumph, of artistic genius, of excellence, of solidarity, calculated attempts to enlighten, expand, and enrich our lives so that we, as young Oakland residents of all colors, all socioeconomic backgrounds did not adopt the dysfunction of our surroundings. Hey, the dysfunction is by no means an accident. It's rather the planned outcome of a very successful program. Uh, I'll take COINTELPRO for 800, Alex, please. We made every attempt to destroy a community that came to this area seeking opportunity, seeking equity, social parity with mainstream culture, and the ever elusive freedom that our founding fathers and credos always espouse. When I say COINTELPRO was successful, I mean, it was executed with, you know, just perfect, you know, perfect execution. When you think about where the Panthers were, these are guys who were just defending themselves, not having shootouts in the streets. I mean, leather jackets are scary. Berets are scary. Guns are scary. But really, these are dudes that are feeding kids and watching the police, not, not actively really clashing with the police, watching the police. And until... FBI plants and agents were sent in. In fact, the same plants and agents that took down Malcolm X, et cetera, these guys had no interest in blowing things up, you know, kidnapping, any of that kind of stuff. And it's, it's, it's odd to me uh, that we sort of gloss over this or we look at the current situation and act as if it exists in a vacuum. I mean, this, this guy who, I mean, I look at old pictures, he looked like a brother to me, I don't know, you know. Really, really, I mean, he took his job seriously, and, and he did well. I mean, if you don't know, that's J. Edgar Hoover. You know, it's not, that's not L. Hugh Harris or anything. <laughs> but I would like to say, if it weren't for the blatant, obvious misuse of force, repression, and disregard for human rights that many experienced during the upheaval of the 60s and 70s, including the free speech movement, the anti-war movement, the free love movement, shout out to Berkeley again, and all the crazy revolutionary movements, uh, the benefits w of which we as Oaklanders and Bay Areans and the entire planet as a result of the activism done right here in Joy, we wouldn't have had the determination uh, necessary to fight. And when I say we, I mean people across all social strata. In fact, it, it seems that the harder that mainstream society pushed against change, the more determined those who would bring about change became. But a lot of that was before my time, okay? I grew up with color pictures. <laughs> my mom would be angry that this is the next picture I'm gonna show because it's but I was juxtaposition, right? J. Edgar, my mama. My mother was and is a college professor, an entrepreneur, a serious taskmaster, the original tiger mom to the 10th power. I mean, saber-toothed tiger mom. No joke. Bees in my household meant beating. Real talk. And I mean, now that sounds crazy, you know. I, I've got a 17-year-old, I've spanked her once. Literally, it was at Hilltop Mall. She tried to take a Barbie or something. One time, and she was two. Never spanked her again. I'm living in the wake of that now. I maybe should have spanked her a little bit more. <laughs> I, I, I lurk on her Twitter and it's scarier than anything I've ever experienced <laughs> in the streets 
But she was a master seamstress, you know, culinary magician, philosopher, self-help guru, and arbiter of swift and often painful justice. Uh, her nickname was Hot Hands. Real talk. She used to fire me up that much. My sister, who's, I mean, we're the same dad. We got to say that. But a lot darker than me, though. Chocolate. I used to be walking around with bruises all the time. And they used to be like, why are you beating that boy like that? And my mom would say, oh, he's just too yellow. I, I beat his sister like that, too. She's fine. <laughs> Real talk. I got, you know. But I'm here. I'm alive. I'm safe. I've, I, you know, I've, I've got a couple of degrees. My, you know, my children are safe. I'm, I'm around for them. I, all these things sometimes need a little bit of motivation to, 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 to hit home. So imagine a young boy with what is now called ADHD, surprising, uh, boundless energy, super inquisitive. You know, I asked my mom why they call it the liquor store. It should be called the liquid store because they sell more than liquid. I mean, liquor, you know, all types of liquids are sold there. That kind of kid, just like, shut up, <laughs> you know. So she was an early childhood psychologist, and she attempted to fuel this inquisitiveness with an incessant stream of information, encouragement, and rapid slaps for any and all infractions. But fortunately, because she had the experience with ADHD drug trials and data and understood the long-term negative impact of these drugs, she never put me on meds. Uh, books and capes, yes, capes. I've had stitches seven times before the age of seven, even on my tongue, because I thought I could fly, literally, not jokes. I ran, the cape went up, I'm flying, <laughs> period. You know, I would jump off something like this, seven, insane. Literally. <laughs> but that was a remedy, you know, like in, indulge in my, my create creativity, but also make sure that I, I tempered it with some, some knowledge on a regular basis. She also was a black nationalist and, and believed in positive imagery, community reinvestment, and cooperative economics. So I had Disney books, but every single character was colored brown, you know, different shades. That sounds extreme, but it actually was an effective strategy in combating Disney's overt racism, okay? Uh, all my childhood doctors, the lawyer, dentist, accountant, all of them, all black. Uh, she taught me early on about recycling the dollar in a community, and she really walked the walk, and I'm extremely indebted in her for instilling this type of consciousness in me. I, when I say black nationalist, it might sound crazy and real leather jackety and hat, but it's not. I mean, she literally was, hey, we've got a community. We've got to support this community. That doesn't, she was never, I never taught anti anything, never. I mean, I'm from here. You can't really be anti. You go run around with a chip on your shoulder all the time. So it was more, hey, support your own when, whenever you can. She's the type of mom that you go to a store, they follow you around the store. She'll stop and say, hey, I'm uncomfortable right now because this lady is following us around the store. If you still want to purchase this item here, I will. But I'm telling you right now, we should go somewhere where we're respected and where our dollar is respected. And I, you know, I missed out on a lot of G.I. Joes and outfits because of that stuff. Because, I mean, it happens to me right now. It's, it's something that never stops. But just that effect on, of consciousness on a child and of, of seeing what was going on around me and being aware, it, it made a profound effect on me. Talk about my dad. He's always been a part of my life. Uh, he passed away in 2009. Uh, and although he didn't live with us, I'm daily reminded of the lessons he taught me and how much like him I am. Uh, this is not your typical hood story. My parents were married. They just got divorced. It happens. That's him. He would be happy that he had some separation between J. Edgar Hoover. He might have probably said, hey, you're going up now. You go, J. Edgar, mom, me. But, you know. So my parents met at Stanford. Both are first-generation college attendees. They set out to create a family in the most Huxtable-like fashion. And Oakland was the perfect place to do it. My mom's an army brat. She's half Japanese, which was cutting edge and groundbreaking in the 50s. Like, ooh, she's a daywalker. You know, wow. Uh, she's never identified as anything but black because in that era there was no, you know, it was, hey, one drop rule, black lady. Her, her mother's Japanese, you know. But I grew up eating sushi and making mochi on New Year, and we also had fried chicken and collards. Shout out Fuzzy Zeller and the whole PGA. And uh, her father was a stern military cook, so all the men in my family cook, and we do hair and all that stuff, and it's not incompatible with our extreme toughness. But she made sure all of his, he made sure, both he and my grandmother, because she stressed education as well, he made sure all his children attended college. Uh, he was an eighth grade dropout that went on to get his associate's degree, and he has it up on his wall right now. 
uh, many years after he put his three children through college. So on our side, the community pride, education, and order, very important. I mean, you can eat off of my grand grandparents' floors right now, you know, super clean, just, you know, I'm giving orders all the time. Uh, my father was a prolific athlete and sort of the golden boy, uh, by all means. He, he came into his own at Stanford. He's from Long Beach via Cleveland, via Alabama, you know, just migration. Uh, but he spent most of his life at Stanford, and I was raised with one goal in life, and that was to go to Stanford by any means necessary. Uh, and look at me, I'm 6'2", 165 pounds wet, super clumsy, got three left feet. And I tried to play a bunch of sports. I gravitated towards track because you can't get cut from the track team. <laughs> yeah. But he knew early on I'd probably have to make it on the strength of my academics. So I was drilled incessantly like, I was like a science experiment for the first 10 to 12 years of my life. No TV, no sugar. Books, 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 books. Those little diagrams where you match things. I mean, it's pre-computer. But I remember even uh, in sixth grade, my mother bought a computer. And it was probably the equivalent of five, five six grand at, at right now. And her friends were all just like, what are you doing? You can't afford this. You can't, you're crazy. But me and A+, uh, started programming and hacking and... I mean, we were on the internet when it was a phone that you plugged into a little rubber thing and you used the clicks, you know, and we used to have to figure out how to do the clicks so that we didn't get, you know, a call to Minnesota on the, on the phone bill. But I mean, we're, you know, this is East Oakland. I'm talking about from 82nd. I'm from a place I don't even go no more, you know? And we were hacking and, you know, really deep off into the computer things at, at a young age. So uh, I just wanted to when we're talking about heritage, I just wanted to show, you know, kind of where I'm coming from and, and how it was typical but atypical. And I think that's the Oakland story in general. You know, everybody's got, it's like you sit down, even when you meet people from Oakland from other places, especially somebody you don't know and haven't met, you're like, how haven't I met you? And then you talk to them, you're like, what? And then you went to space? And then what? You know, like, <laughs> incredible people, cra incredible people, because there's, there's so much going on that we have access to because we're sort of, we're on the coast but we're not LA, so there's not like that movie industry weird stuff going on. It's diverse, I mean, it's really diverse. You, I mean, Chicago probably has the same ethnic make makeup as Oakland, but it's completely segregated. I tripped out when I went to Chicago, like the white people don't even live with each other. This is Polish town and this is Greek town. This is Russian, I mean, they don't even mess with each other. That was, that was kind of a head cracker to me growing up because I, I didn't understand, you know, it was looked at as a monolith, like quote unquote white side is looked at as a monolith. And also because of how, I hate using the term integrated because it kind of has this concept of subsuming other cultures to the mainstream culture, but sort of, I like to use inclusive, inclusive. I hate using diversity because it's one of those scary buzzwords that people don't like to use now. But we live in an inclusive society here. My parents also convinced a lot of people to move to Oakland during the 70s. Uh, there were jobs at the port, cultural freedom, diversity. You know, Strong black community were uh, her bargaining chips. So I grew up with blood relatives and a vast extended family of people who moved to Oakland seeking these things. In fact, in Hieroglyphics, which is my musical collective, there's only one parent who is a Bay Area native. All of our parents migrated here, mostly from the South, of course, or Jamaica in the case of A+. Either a few years before we were born or right after we were born. And I think that's very significant because when people talk about I'm an Oakland native and I've been here, it's like you've been here maybe two generations. Come on, you know, like, you know, it, it's, it's not something where there's this long, fast history of, especially within the black community, people being here so long. I mean, this is California. It's the end. It took a while for everybody to get here. And that, that, that includes uh, all of these sort of families that I grew up with. And this, I wouldn't call it a great migration, but it was sort of a migration, you know. Um, the same as when people were moving out of the south to Chicago long ago or moving out of the south to the big cities. This wasn't kind of a big city move. It was, it was way post that, but it was a similar type thing. Like, come out, there's jobs. You can find something, there's schools, it's safe, et cetera, because it, it was, except for the cops, you know? A lot of my friends had nuclear families and I benefited, benefited much from their tutelage and from the tutelage of the men in their families besides, I mean, as much as from my own father. So I'm super indebted to the fathers of most of my buddies for instilling values in us and being present, literally present, when my own father lived so far from me. So my early years are filled with fond memories, playing in the hills of top 82nd, swimming at Diamond Pool, Roberts Pool, Temescal Pool, Hayward Plunge, and even in Temescal. How many of y'all have swam in Lake Temescal? Y'all ain't really from Oak, man. 
Go swim in Lake Temescal. It's like a ritual. I, is, it, is it legal to swim in there anymore? Yeah, go swim in Lake Temescal. I mean, it's just a lake. There's nothing under there. Maybe, you know. It, you know, we grew up swimming in Temescal. Like, when we, went, when we had a Temescal field trip, you brought your swimming trunks to school and to swim. I mean, I remember racing leaves in the gutter on rainy days because I lived on a hill. So I guess that does put me a, a while back. Okay, but simpler times indeed. So after that crack came, Cadillacs started disappearing. Families broke up. You know, one by one, people began to lose homes, move away. And uh, the fast money addiction also created this sort of state of violence that we live in right now. I mean, when you're making, you know, tens and tens of thousands of dollars, I don't know if you know, New Jack City is based on 6 9 Village projects in East Oakland. It's not based on some New York project. It's based on East Oakland. You know, Doug McHenry, who produced the film, went to Stanford with my parents, and he came out here, and that's what he saw and was inspired to make the movie. Uh, so I've got a long list of friends who I lost to the game, et cetera, and yada, yada, yada. Rest in peace, but on the real, I want you all to understand that most of my friends didn't. They, they went the other direction, you know? I mean, I remember even being a kid and going down to the spotlight, put me on. And they're like, nah, dude, you gotta be the lawyer. You know, you gotta get us out of jail. And if you come down here again, we're gonna kill you. You know, but imagine, thugs don't do that anymore because of three strikes. Now thugs are like, hey kid, you're gonna get less time. So I want you to do this dirt for me. You know, I, well, I can't really do anything. I got this ankle monitor on, everything. I want you to get out here and do this dirt for me. And I'm gonna sit back and watch you kill yourself as I had done for the last 20, 30 years. Now I mean I, I mean the hypothetical thug in that combo. But um, I mean, I, I remember going down wanting to get put on and being turned away. So that was the spirit w that was still going on. Hey, little youngster, this ain't for you. You know, we getting this money, but this isn't for you. Remember the Panthers, et cetera. It wasn't, it wasn't this sort of Oakland and we stupid and we dumb and we fight people and we, we are, we're rambunctious and we're boisterous and we're disrespectful and we, we are unsightly and unseemly and not cool and ugh, you from Oakland. It wasn't that. It was like, ooh, you from Oakland. Yeah, brother. You know, like, yeah. So that, that I think that that thing and also just hip hop came into my life. Let me see if I, oh, hip hop, there it goes. And between those two things and Kwanzaa celebrations and community circles and drumming and all these types of things, that really rescued me and uh, sort of helped me to be here speaking to you. Have you ever heard of hieroglyphics? Who's heard of hieroglyphics? Oh, hell yeah, okay, yeah. Well, you know, we're not like the, we're like considered the Grateful Dead of hip hop, you know? Like really, we've got to, you know, our fans follow us to city to city and they get tattoos and they're sort of peaceful. They smoke a lot of pot, I hear. I don't know anything about that. But they, you know, it's, it's, it's very different and it's because I think we were raised on a very di diverse and, and, and inclusive sort of mus musical background that, that comes from, I mean, Look at Tower of Power, look at Lenny Williams. I mean, that looks like some kind of Rainbow Coalition hippie kind of poster, like, yeah, Oakland. You know what I mean, though? Like, th this is, and, and think about the different musical uh, backgrounds and tastes that, 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 you know, groups like Tower of Power, Sly and the Family Stone, Pointer Sisters, this is all Oakland, but so different and so vast. So we've been fortunate to have this musical legacy upon which we can kind of stand. And um, that's been, awesome and, and, and helped us not to have to posture or act like even the Two Shorts or the MC Hammers. If you look at everybody from the Bay, it's diverse. You look at Living Legends, similar makeup, completely different style of music. And, and that, that's what I mean. Like, we're encouraged here to be different and not for the sake of being different. It's for the sake of being yourself and recognizing all the sum of parts, the sum of the parts that, you're, that create you rather than shunning some to appear more authentic or hiding some to appear, you know, cool or hip. I'm hoping that as I get older, you know, I can, I can continue with my creative endeavors musically. And also, as he said, I, I just finished at Berkeley for um, architecture. I just got my master's. So if you need kitchen or additional dwelling unit for your in-laws, you want to build another impact hub, you need to call me. You know what I'm saying, though? Hieroglyphics, that's one of my projects. You see the symbol, that's a, they say it's the third most recognizable symbol in hip hop, I mean in music, after Rolling Stone and Black Flag. We've got a new album coming out, it's called There Is Only Now. Uh, it's completely analog, it was recorded on two inch tape. Uh, all brand new music, no samples. First single features Snoop Dogg, I don't know why the room is so hazy, it must have been 
bad filter. I just finished uh, for one of the guys in my group, Casual Sister. I just did a cupcake shop for her in Berkeley. It's called Cupcaking, so go check them out. Really good cupcakes. They have a chicken and waffle cupcake. Come on. Come on. Come on. I also uh, am working on this invention I have called the Sustainer. It's basically a shipping container that can create this aquaponic system. It creates uh, about three acres worth of food, about uh, 250 pounds a year of tilapia, and about 1,300 eggs in the chicken coop, all solar powered. Only input you need is water. So I have an idea of putting those in sort of all these abandoned lots and start of starting these community farms that once the abandoned... Hey, yeah, let's do it. The the thing that's different about this is that once, once the lot inevitably gets bought by somebody with a lot of cash from China, probably, that you can move it and take it to the next lot. And in the meantime, while it's just sitting there in disrepair by, you know, the slumlords that's leaving, that's left it, you can just drop it on the lot and sort of surreptitiously get your food on, you know? This is my thesis presentation. It comes with a game. I, I wanted to make it a community project where you have a game board and you lay out the uh, different containers in a certain array to produce the most food, but also create safe spaces, places for childcare, places that people can learn about farming, et cetera. So it's not just like a, a drop and sort of leave type thing. So those are kind of the projects I'm working on. This is the city I'm representing. Real quickly, I just want to talk about heritage and where we're going from here. So we maintain a lock on this sort of cool urbanity and then set to a backdrop of chaos. We have this rep as this tough city though we have one of the nation's highest property values. I mean, there are people here who own horses, there are people here who sell horse, you know? That's the beauty of Oakland. But let's, let's not let the negativity define us or even be a value part of our, 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 our identity. I, I'm tired of it being like, oh, you're from Oakland. Like, I, I, I didn't grow up like that. When I grew up, oh, you're from Oakland was like, yeah, Panthers. Oh, you're on that next level stuff. And it's getting back to that level. I mean, things like the Impact Hub, things like these sort of, uh, Community collectives, farming collectives, not all of them are food goods, you know what I'm saying? But farming collectives, they're, they're, they're starting to show Oakland as a place that's about inclusion, coming together, and, and elevation, and self-determination. And that's kind of what I want the legacy of Oakland to be in the current and modern times. And that's what I'm excited about being a part of. So I'm just happy to be here, hopefully be an asset. I'm available through just real life. I still got a phone. I still answer phones. I, I, you know, I lurk on Twitter. I don't really mess around on Twitter too much. I, ha I had a bad addiction and I had to go to rehab. And I, I just want to be a representative of uh, sort of the counterbalance to the brain drain we experience. You know, I mean, most people, when they get educated, they don't come back from wherever they went to college. It, it just doesn't, nah, I'm not coming back. P partly because the property value is prohibitive, but partly because it's just like, ah, I don't want to deal with the town, you know? So I'm trying to, trying to stand here as a counterbalance to that. Uh, I'm not into politics at all. I don't mess with politics. I'm a, what do you call it, a materialist? I don't, not materialistic, but a materialist. I'm just like, look, if we're all fed and clothed, we can hash all that other stuff out. But if people aren't eating, people are gonna get robbed. People are gonna get killed. People are, you know, if people aren't happy, and I, I mean happy, their basic needs being taken care of, then, then, then there are gonna be problems. So. I sort of work from that perspective. I mean, I make music, and that's probably the most esoteric thing I do. Everything else is building, creating, feeding, distributing, things of that nature. And I just am super excited to be part of, I don't want to call it the New Oakland, because that's what I'm trying to say, is that it's not a New Oakland thing. This is the spirit that I was born into. This is the spirit that I've been raised up with. And I think that whether you're a new resident or a transplant or a returning resident, or a long-time resident or a multi-generational resident, we all sort of have to decide that we're gonna reclaim Oakland and redefine Oakland as the shining star of positivity and community and togetherness and inclusion. Okay, I'm gonna trademark that, no, I'm sorry. Inclu but inclusion, that, that it always has been to me. So I appreciate you all for coming out and I'm here for questions if you have any. Yeah.